Coming up next, how to do the Russian hard style kettlebell swing. Hard style Russian kettlebell swing. What is that? That's a kettlebell swing where it's characterized by a strong hip snap and letting the kettlebell come up to approximately chest height and then back down. There are other types of swing, such as the American swing or also known as the CrossFit swing, where the hands go above head. But today I'm gonna to show you this particular style because it's safest for your shoulders and it's easiest to learn. So one thing I do want you to remember whenever you're practicing kettlebell swings or any movement with kettlebells that involves some sort of a swinging movement, don't swing the kettlebell towards people and don't try and contend with the space of the kettlebell. In other words, if you begin to lose the kettlebell, let it go. Make sure that you always try and practice the swings or do the swing somewhere where you don't mind the kettlebell landing or falling on the ground. We'd much rather have a story about you chipping the floor of the bay with a kettlebell by dropping it than having a story of the one time you threw your back out trying to catch that 24 kilogram kettlebell during a swing. So with those things in mind, let's get started. Okay, so we need to remember that in a hard style kettlebell swing, it's characterized by a hip, hip hinge movement, not a squatting movement. And that would be one of the faults that I see most often with a kettlebell hard style swing. Some folks might think that they are doing a regular swing, but really they're kind of doing like a squat swing. And we want to characterize this movement by a hip hinge movement, such as what we've learned for doing uh, deadlifts or a uh, Romanian deadlift that has a minimal bend in the knee. So we want to make sure that we remember when we do these swings, we're looking to reach back, not down with our hips. This is a posterior chain building movement from, the, from your traps all the way down through your hamstrings. So we want to remember that we're always hinging back, minimizing the squat or the bend in the knees to minimize the squat stance and then snapping back up. So what can we do to make sure that we have a good movement is to make, think about trying to reach for the wall behind us as far as we can before falling over. So this is the first movement we need to understand for the kettlebell swing is to reach back. The next movement we need to understand for our lower body is to snap. Think of almost jumping through your heels. We want to jump through our heels, squeeze our glutes, and then squeeze our core. If we do those two things, that'll prevent us from hyperextending in the front, reducing the chance of a lower back injury from over, uh, overextending, hyperextending into our low back region here, or this ex excessive flexion here in the lower back. So we wanna make sure we reach back as far as we can, and when we come back up, we're squeezing, pulling through our heels, standing straight up and embracing our core as if we were going to be doing a plank in the midair or bracing ourselves for a punch in the stomach. That way we brace ourselves, that prevents us from hyperextending our hips and that helps protect us. Something else we need to remember when we're in the swinging motion with our arms. This is not an arm lifting movement. We are not trying to take a kettlebell and then lift it with our arms. We're letting the weight of the bell and the momentum swing the arms up to whatever height they end up at. And then as it comes down, that's where we activate our lats to bring the kettlebell back between our legs to start the next swing. In order to protect our shoulders, we want to make sure that we don't extend and roll our shoulders forward we want to stand strong and proud and keep our shoulders back. We can work on that by thinking about pinching a piece of paper behind our armpits here. So when we come down, almost like we're trying to bend the kettlebell if we're using two hands, that helps pinch our shoulders down and back a bit and that protects us from overextending our shoulders, thereby rounding out and then exposing ourselves to potential shoulder injuries. If you keep those things in mind, we'll minimize any chances of any injuries for this. So to get started, our setup, we'll have a bell in front of us. We'll take a small step back. Shoulders are gonna be shoulder width, or feet will be shoulder width apart or slightly wider. 
we're going to push our hips back and reach for the bell. Now you will see I have to extend here to reach for it due to obviously my height. But that's just for the first setup. After that, we're going to tack our shoulders back once we go the, uh, into the swing. The first movement is called the hike. It's just like hiking a football. Familiarize yourself with this movement first before we move on. And a hike would look something similar to this. Push my hips back, start squeezing into my shoulders here, back, and put it back down. Just hike it as if we're trying to throw the kettlebell behind us. And that's all we're doing is getting used to that movement. We try to keep our hips back the best we can. From there, we're going to hike, stand up, keep our shoulders back, be mindful to not hyperextend our hips, stand up, come back down, bringing the kettlebell through our legs, and set it back down just as we started. One thing I want to talk about here is our breathing pattern. We want to try to inhale when we bring the kettlebell back through our legs. Exhale when we come up. The exhale helps brace our body for that top plank position. And then obviously the inhale is to help us keep on a cycle. So we want to inhale, exhale. So once you get that motion going, we're ready to do continuous swings. We want to be mindful that when we bring the kettlebell down between our legs, we're inhaling, but we're pushing our hips back, not squatting down. There will be a bend in your knees, but we want to push back and then extend straight up. And we would just continue with that, adding uh, reps, going two, three, four, following that pattern. The kettlebell swing is actually very simple and easy to do. We just have a couple of mindful movements that we need to remind ourselves so that we don't injure ourselves doing this exercise. I have a towel here, and that is to help if you're having difficulty with the timing of the swing, or to just do this in general, just to know that you have the right timing, take a hand towel, pass it through the handle, and hold the towel on either end. What's gonna happen here is you won't be in contact with the kettlebell directly, obviously, but that's gonna show whether you have the correct timing with the towel. And that'll show the timing of the kettlebell if you're coming down too early or coming back up too early and your timing is off. It should look something similar to this. You notice that the kettlebell stayed smooth and in line with the towel the whole time. If you have something like this, then you know your timing is a bit off. So you saw there that the kettlebell was swinging around on the towel, and that's not what we want. That was my timing was off with the swing of my body, and when they're out of sync, that's going to lead you to imbalances during the swing and potential for injury. So that's a good one to do, especially when you're trying to start out learning how to do this, is to get your timing down using that towel swing. I hope all that was helpful. That was really quick and fast. There's lots of videos on YouTube on how to do this particular swing. Just remember, this is not a squat movement. It's a hinge movement. It's not an arm workout for lifting. We want to let the hips pop, let the kettlebell come up to where it's going to go. And then as soon as it starts coming down, you can activate your lats, pull the kettlebell back through your legs, and start the motion all over again. I hope this is helpful for you and keep your eyes open for another kettlebell uh, video later on for some other movements. 
Okay, guys, a couple of things I didn't mention during the video that I wanted to make sure I touched on. One was footwear. In this video, I was wearing socks. You almost always want to try and do kettlebell swings, barefoot or in socks, or if you're going to wear shoes, some sort of like CrossFit style shoe that has minimal padding so you can really feel the ground as you move. One of the benefits of the kettlebell swing is that when you start swinging, your feet will tend to start trying to grip at the ground and it helps build your feet and your arches. So I would really recommend that you don't wear any running shoes or athletic wear. If possible, do it in your socks or barefoot. Grip. I didn't talk about grip on the kettlebell. We don't want to death grip the kettlebell when we're swinging. We want to have a, a firm but loose, if that makes sense, grip to let the kettlebell move in our hands. That will reduce the amount of blistering and tears in our hands if you start doing more and more reps. Uh, chalk would definitely be advisable if you have it available. I've been using what's called liquid chalk, and it's basically chalk that's been put in rubbing alcohol, and you squirt it out of a bottle into your hand, you run it, rub it around like it's hand sanitizer, and it dries with chalk on your hands, and it doesn't leave a big cloud of chalk dust all over the place. Also, programming. Generally, you want to try and keep your swings, at least when you get started, to about 10 or less. It's kind of similar to deadlifts. We don't want to do high rep, sets on a deadlift until you have really familiarized yourself with the movement and you've built all of the musculature in your hips and your back and all that to accommodate the movement. Same thing with the swing. We want to make sure that we build our lower back and our hip structure and our shoulder structure before we start moving into higher rep stuff. This is a aerobic conditioning type movement that's very muscular endurance based because you have the weight all the stations should have a 16 kilogram bell. I would recommend starting with that until you're familiar with the movement. And then you can start moving in 24 kilogram bells. And I believe all the stations should have one of those as well. I would recommend maybe 10 sets of 10 or five sets of 10 reps, uh, taking a break as long as needed to start. And then you can work into every minute on the minute. You can do that as a finisher, a warm up, a main workout, Lots of different ways to do it. If you have any questions, get a hold of me. I can give you some other programming ideas. And obviously, if you have any uh, needs for assistance on working on the swing and making sure that you're doing it right, you can take a video of yourself, send it to me, or if we can make arrangements, I'll come out to the station and help you, help you out. All right, I hope this was helpful and enjoy.